Welcome back. We're back with the BMW. Huge update for the BMW. I know I haven't made a video in a, in a minute, but we're back here. And as you can see, she looks, looks a little different from when you saw it last time. So we'll go over the changes from the front to the back of what I've done since the last video. There's still more to, that I got to do on it, but uh, we'll start with what I've done so far. First things first, you'll notice we got this front fender and the uh, wheels are a little bit different. I got the new tires, the Falcons on the front, and I put 17 inch wheels back on the front to match the rear, cause uh, I'm gonna be running 17 inch wheels or tires this year because 18s are expensive and I have these. But also we got the big duck club front overs on here, which I gotta fix it a little bit. It's got a little bit of a, uh, bubbles up a little bit right there, but that's uh, making the front end look pretty, pretty good. That's that's nothing crazy. That's all all I've done on the front here. Then uh, next thing is this door. As you can see, that's not the same color. And it's not dented though. So, well, it's a little dented. We got a minor little dent there. And there's a couple dings you can see right there. Rocking the cracks. But uh, this is a door I have off part, had off of a parts car and there's obviously not a huge dent in it like there was before. So that's always a plus. Now we go to the rear. I got these rear lower quarter panels or whatever the hell they call them. This is where that huge dent was and you can probably see it in a video or I can put a picture right here of what it looked like. You can see kind of part of the damage there and it goes in right there. But uh, that covers that and makes it look, look all nice like. Obviously got the same wheels on the back still, but I got these quarter panels all riveted on, ready to go and done. So that's, that's pretty cool. And now for one of my favorite parts of the car, which I think came out like one of the sickest, is this whole rear setup. So we have the rear setup. Obviously I finished cutting all the, the quarter panels here and it's all even on the side, like the actual metal quarter panels, that wiring out of the way. But I uh, got the tail lights in. They're uh, pretty much in for good. I mean, obviously I'm gonna have to take them out to paint it and stuff, but they're in there where they gotta be and they look, look decent. I mean, there's a gap here, but I, I can't do much about that. <laughs> That's just how they're, how they're made. But, uh, yeah, look at that. Ow. Would you look at that? Yeah. So we'll start with the top here. We got this custom with a K freaking strut, strut brace here. My buddy Matt, Peak Performance, he was in, I think I mentioned him in the last video, he made all that. But whew, look at that thing. He made up those plates right there and those that whole contraption and there you go. I have better pictures. I can put some more pictures of just those on the screen. He made those on his plasma table and then we just bent this with our bender we got here, and uh, I think it came out damn good. Clears the battery well, and uh, strengthen up, strengthen up, strengthen up. Today, Junior! And it strengthens up the, did I say that? Oh my God, I can't talk. But strengthen. What did he say? Hey! Oh. Strengthens up the rear of the car, and just makes it a little stiffer, and in case of an impact, it holds the strut towers together a little bit, is my thought, but. I could be completely wrong, so there's that. Then we come to the old bash bar. Uh, Cosmic and I bent this up and I welded it. Welds aren't that pretty. I mean, that was not horrible, but like, ugh, no, those aren't that good. So let's not look at that. Ray Charles welded it. But we bent this bumper up and first shot, we got it pretty perfect. Obviously I don't have the bumper cover on here, but we made it inside the bumper cover and uh, it fits like perfect, so fits the bumper cover perfect and we fitted it all up where I drilled all these holes through here and it's just bolted through but I got nuts welded on the back side so we can just pull it off real quick if need be but uh yeah with the bumper on here the gap here is a little bit there's a little bit of a gap there with the bumper cover on but looks pretty even side to side so I'm pretty happy with it then also a feature I kind of like is the little uh jacking point we put on the bottom of the frame here I think it just looks good and functional. I never had one of them. 
I also did get the trunk fitted up. It's it's close. There's a little bit of a gap right here. I mean, it's gotta if you look at it, it's gotta go forward and up a little bit. But uh, it's just gotta be adjusted some. But not the end of the world. But it looks. I keep saying but, but oh my god, <laughs> uh, looks good though. And I'm happy with how it came out. I mean, the gaps around the lights and such, and the bottom piece there are pretty minimal. And I mean, looks pretty pretty good from a little bit of a distance here. Once you put the bumper on there, you know, kind of looks like a car again. I gotta put the uh, the Big Duck Club spoiler on this too, but uh, looks plain without it. Put the logo and all the other stuff, but but looks like a car again. Yeah, you can see that. That's gotta get pushed forwards a little bit, and uh, it'll just hold itself there. But another huge thing we got done since the last video was this deck lid or whatever you want to call it. I kind of call it a deck lid, but it's kind of a firewall too. That and here in one where the uh, seat goes. So we got this done and that done. So it completely seals off the entire, as I break my trunk, completely seals off the back of the car to the front of the car. My buddy, uh, Matt, once again, peak performance, laid some dimes right there in the wind drive through. Have a picture of him standing in his driveway and welding it <laughs> but uh yeah we sealed that all off so my my thought is to just seal that all off for number one try to get as little carbon monoxide into the cabin as possible or the inside of the car as possible because i don't want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning on grid but uh that and keep smoke out and as a legitimate f leg legitimate firewall so uh, in case of a fire back here, tire fire, if something ever happened with the battery or something, anything, keep the fire out of the, out of the driver's seat. And uh, oh yeah, speaking of that battery, we had Cosmic make a freaking custom bracket, welded some angle there, an angle on the sides on the other side with some threaded rod up through there and hold down. Came out pretty damn nice and that thing ain't going anywhere. I can tell you that from, for sure. Then we went ahead and painted this inside this gray that we found and I, I think it looks pretty good. I changed it from the black because the black always kind of looked dingy and this look has like a clean look to it. Granted, I got to keep it clean now, but pretty clean look and uh, I'm just happy with how it came out back here. One of my favorite parts, like I said. Here's a shot from the inside of that firewall. We put seam sealer, not seam sealer, uh, silicone all around that top firewall edge or on that edge right there even though it doesn't look sealed it's tight to the to the body of the car and then this is all seam sealed and bolted in and so it's all removable if need be but it's it's bolted in for now and then obviously you can tell in here is the same color as the back once again I, the black just looked dingy and i want something brighter and cleaner looking we did everything here but uh we had literally Last weekend, this was all ripped out. I have some pictures, and they're all on my Instagram if you guys follow that. But, which you should, which I'll put it right here. Ha ha ha. Shameless plug. But we had the whole dash ripped out of it, and uh, Cosmic redid some wiring. He has to do a little bit more here just to figure it out, but wiring, not my specialty. So, going to leave that to him, but I got the seat back in there, steering wheel, dash, and everything, handbrake, shifter. I just tried to, tried to clean everything up as I went. Like, I painted the... Yeah, the uh, handbrake bracket, but uh, little stuff, little stuff. And I even, courtesy of my boy Logan, who was nagging me to do it when I painted the cage black, I put vinyl, obviously you can't tell, just clear vinyl on the cage, on the door bars, on the door bars on that side, and just back here where the uh, harness is fried, like over there. So just a little touch to hopefully keep it a little nicer and not have to do it again so soon, you know? So that pretty much wraps up of what, what we've got done over uh, since the last video, which all that stuff, if you've built the car, you know, it just takes time and with full-time work and such. 
it takes time, weekends and hours and days and a lot of time. But uh, we're getting there. We're about a month out from the first event, so we're getting there. But uh, we're pretty close to paint and body work. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it before or after. There's a couple little things we got to do still. Like one, which I mean, we could do it after. But one is I got to put a fire... Uh, not fire, electrical cutoff switch. I have to put it on the driver's side uh, cowl. So pretty much what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it like right in here. You can do a pull lever or a pull cable so I can keep it on that side where all the wiring is, the actual switch. But uh, I can run a cable over here, which is legal in drifting. So you can just pull it here and uh, c kills the car. So that's one of the, one of the major things I have to do. But uh, another major thing I'm looking to do too is the rear M3 swap, which I'm gonna buy upgraded axles. They're G-Force axles from uh, Seems Le Legit Garage, which they are not cheap at all, but supposedly they should kind of be an end-all axle. Like I shouldn't break them at all. So looking into those, and that means I have to swap the rear suspension. I have the M3 arms and I just gotta look into brake stuff and how my handbrake will work with it. And if I need to get calipers for that to work with the M3 rotors and such, but uh. Other than that, that's kind of the main things. I need to buy a clutch for it too, which that doesn't have to be done first thing, but I would really like to get a clutch in it before I'm going down to like Florida for clutch kickers, which is 24 hours away or or uh, any other big events that are that are a distance away. I don't want to go and, you know, blow a clutch out or fucking anything like that. Axles, you know, obviously you can deal with, but, but hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, clutches, that would suck to do. I could do it at the track, but... Wouldn't be fun. Wouldn't be fun. So that's something I gotta upgrade. But other than that, there's a couple little things in the engine bay that uh, can be done. Like I need to put a breather on my power steering just so it doesn't overflow or whatever you want to call it. And uh, gotta put a pull. Uh, I bought an SFI. This is getting out of hand. I bought an SFI approved uh, super damper. It's it's just like a super good uh, crank pulley because I did have one break which I'll put the broken piece on the screen. Pretty ridiculous. I didn't know that was a thing. I was going to break it, but I guess there's a lot more stress on it with the supercharger and the supercharger belt, but uh, that pretty much ends it for the update on the BMW. So we'll see in the next video. I'll try, I'll try to, you know, make some more videos as I'm going, but I always forget and just get in the zone of working. And if you, if you work on cars, you know, you know, you're just in the zone. <laughs> So that's it, and uh, yeah. Also, the K10 is still broken and I have not fixed it. I haven't even touched it, haven't looked at it, so. Yeah, K10's broken, still haven't fixed it, haven't looked at it, so there's that. Suburban pulled it in the video. Rocket ship. Ignore the temp gauge. <laughs>